Good morning. morning. We want to welcome you this morning to worship with us here today. My name is Carrie Schaefer. I'm the director of youth, and we are very excited that you are here to worship with us. Uh, Just a few announcements that are in your bulletin or online for you to view. Um, If you have a kid that is entering 6th through 12th grade and you would like to go kayaking, today is the deadline to decide if you would like to join us on Friday so we can make sure everything is ready for you. Um, A few other things in your bulletin. Uh, Bible school with the community will be happening in August, and we'd like you to pre-register. We have lots of I can't remember the number of campers going to camp this summer. So our June mission is for uh, camper ships, and we are short in that um, fund. So if you feel it on your heart to help some kids go to camp, you can donate to that mission. This week specifically, uh, Blake Williams and Grady Frank will be going to camp out at uh, Coronas Ministries. So please keep them in your prayers. And one more announcement is that we have released the details on our mission trip for next summer in 2025, which is in your bulletin in going to Belize. If you have any questions um, on that trip, please see me and I can help answer those. We are going to be going with Thirst Missions again, so you can look up details also on their website. And I believe that is all the announcements. If you will please rise for the ringing of the bell as it calls us into worship. Church of Christ, 
morning. Number one, I actually saw the sun shining before we got started. How about a round of applause for that? And how about even a bigger round of applause for our trustee team? They not only have the lights in this part of the worship space going today, they've got them going in the middle, and maybe in the next week or two we'll even be able to pick them all the way up back to the back. So thank you to them also. You know, you don't realize until you worship in a, a beautiful old worship space how tricky a lot of the mechanical work can actually be. So we are uh, working with the electric companies, we're working with local people and non-local people trying to figure out what's going on with our switchboards. So thanks again for the uh, trustees and all the work that you do. Let us be in a time of prayer. Heavenly Father, we come to you today to praise you and to worship you and to call out your name as holy, the name that we lift above all other names, God, our God, our creator, creator of the universe and all that live in its space. We also come in front of you, God, a people asking for your grace, your mercy, and your forgiveness. And as we continue studying the book of James, we are reminded of how easily our words and our actions can harm, offend, and make others feel less than. Please help us to more closely pay attention to our words and our actions so that they might be both glorifying to you and welcoming and reflecting the light and love back out to those who you have placed in our spaces. God, today we especially pray for the friends and family of our Grace Church who are hurting, hurting relationally, financially, physically, and emotionally. 
please step in and restore us and to help us reconcile back to each other and back to you. We pray for our friends who are navigating through way, way too much water. God, please make the waters recede and keep those in harm's way safe. Please give our church leaders, the leaders of our local communities, our state, our country, and our world, hearts of peace and divine wisdom to lead us back into relationship with each other and back into relationship with you, O oh God. This morning we specifically lift up those who are in our prayers. That would be Sarah Hedke, Bob Arnold and his family, Bob Arend and his family, the Wendroth family, Katie Hubrin, Terry Thompson, Berkeley Damhoff, Larry Schultz and Paul Larson, Nathaniel Crow, Gary Herzberg and Kevin Elwood, Carolyn Diedrich and Dan Schwant. God, please protect those in our military who have been called up to protect us. Tom Gray, Lucas Holtz, Nate Burr, and William Nichols. Also this morning, we lift up our police, fire, and ambulance protectors, Dusty Veldkamp and Dean Herzberg, Mike Hemish, Brad Melhop, John Colzer, Robert O'Fallon, Russell O'Fallon, Dan McClure, Alex Herzberg, Brittany Austin, Callie Smith, Trevor Wright and Jeremiah Johnson, Christine Story, and Jeremy Schultz. Now let us all take a moment to lift our silent prayers. Let us take all those prayers that we have spoken aloud and those that we have lifted up silently. Let's wrap them up into the Lord's Prayer that we were taught to pray over 2,000 years ago. Please join me in our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. All right, we've got a treat this morning. Would our kiddos and those who are young at heart please come up? I believe we have got the gumpets in the house. Hi, Mo. How are you today? You know, I really wish I had a pet. It wouldn't even have to be a dog. Do you have any pets, Mo? I have a dog named Bailey, but she's a lot of work. I must feed her every day and take her for walks. I even have to give him a bath. That is a big mess. Mo, look. What? There's a cat over there. It must be a stray. It doesn't have a collar or anything, and it looks so lonely. 
Maybe I could take it home with me. Casey, wait, I'm not sure that's a good idea. Rawr. Oh my goodness, Casey, that looked like it hurt. You know, that was really dangerous. You're lucky it didn't bite you and give you rabies or something. I know, I know. My mom already talked to me about that. I thought it was tame. Wild animals can be very dangerous. Now you tell me that. Do you know what else can be dangerous when it's not tame? What? Your tongue. My tongue? What is it going to do, lick you to death? No, I was reading about it in the, my Bible, and it says that men have been able to tame all kinds of wild animals, but not the tongue. I wish someone had tamed the cat. How do you tame your tongue? That's what I asked my mom, and she said that we tame our tongues by controlling what we say. Have you ever said something and then wish you hadn't? Yes, yeah, sometimes girls say mean things about each other behind their backs. Yesterday they were t talking about Susie, and I said she had a big nose. When I turned around, she was right behind me. She was so upset that she ran out of the room crying. I don't know why I said that. I really like Susie. Sometimes controlling what we say is really hard. We talk before we think. Before I came to church, I used to say bad words. It was hard to stop. They would come out of my mouth before I even knew it. It took me a long time to stop saying them. It would probably be easier to tame the cat that attacked you than it would be to tame your tongue. But God wants us to be careful what we say. Everything we say should be pleasing to him. That reminds me of a verse that we learned on Wednesdays at church, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. That's right, Casey. We need to remember to think before we speak, because if it's going to hurt somebody, we should just keep our mouth shut. Kids, will you pray with us before you go back to your seats? Dear God, please help us to think about what we are saying and to use only kind words. Amen. You can go back to your seats now. So what does that mean for us? It means that every time we show love to those around us, we're reflecting who God is. When we're patient with our family and friends, when we're kind to a stranger, we reflect God's love. It's not about jealousy, but contentment. It's not about arrogance, but humility. When we abandon our resentfulness toward one another, we reflect God's love. When we speak out on injustice and rejoice in the truth, we reflect God's love. When no matter what happens, we continue to hope and trust in God when we endure through the trials of every relationship and yet still hold tight to love, we are reflecting God to those around us, reflecting his always trusting, always hoping, never ending love. Please pray with me. 
Heavenly God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing to you, O oh God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So good morning again to our friends and family here at Grace Church who are worshiping in our worship space and also to those who are worshiping with us online, which we call our second campus. And today we're going to be continuing our sermon series entitled, A Faith That Works. A Faith That Works, where we're studying the book of James, which can actually be found in the New Testament. Now, you can check out our last two messages if you happen to have missed them or want to hear them again. Uh, if you go to PainesvilleGrace.org, we've got them loaded up on the website. And over the last couple weeks, what we've been reminded of is that James is presumed to be the half-biological brother of Jesus Christ himself. At the time the book was written, he was probably the lead pastor at the Church of Jerusalem. Now, this church at this time was the largest Christian church known in the whole world. So that should give James a lot of street credit when he's actually writing the book of James. And what he does is he tells us that we're going to face various what he calls tests in life. And when we do, he tells us that God gives us the tools to help us work through the tests. And he says God has given us prayer. God has given us scripture, God has given us each other, God has given us earthly and worldly heavenly peace, along with heavenly wisdom, and lastly, for sure, a sense of humor. Now, James also has been reminding us that either in life we are winning or we're learning. Now, he doesn't say we're winning and losing. He's reframed that. He says we're winning or learning. So what are we learning? Well, we're learning how to come closer to Christ, to be and act more Christ-like. We're learning some pretty tough lessons as we go through life. And hopefully, as we go through those lessons and those tests, we're doing better the next time. And we're also sharing that information in our experiences with those that God has put around us and in our spaces. Now, James also calls us up to do three specific things. He calls us up to grow in love of God and neighbor, and we've talked about that as we look at the cross. The vertical piece is getting right and staying in love with God, and the horizontal piece is staying in love with neighbor, reaching out to new people which brings us to the second point. Reaching out to new people simply means that perhaps we have an opportunity to share our faith journey with them or to share our testament with them or our testimonies just in hopes that they might ask us some questions about Jesus. And lastly, James calls us up to heal a broken world. And the kids told us a couple weeks ago what that meant. It simply means to be kind, period. Now, the interesting thing about these three uh, observations and recommendations from James is they happen to overlap perfectly with our United Methodist vision, which is grow in love of neighbor, reach new people, and to heal a broken world. James also continues to connect the dots for us on our faith in Jesus Christ and how that helps call us up for good works. He says a pa passive faith, in other words, a faith with no action, is not a saving faith. He writes, faith without works is dead. So it's not good works that actually save us. No, not at all. Good works simply prove that that seed of faith has been planted in each and every one of us. James is really saying, you can't have faith and not act on it, my friends. We're saved to do good works, which according to the Apostle Paul in Ephesians, which we read last week, says, 
for we are what God has made, created in Christ Jesus, for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. To be our way of life. So that brings us current up to today, where we're going to take a deeper dive and look at chapter 3 of James. And I have two separate headings in my Bible in this section. One says, when you open your mouth, and the second one says, live well, live wisely. So we're going to have some fun with this one today, huh? So let's hear the first 12 verses of James chapter 3, entitled, When You Open Your Mouth. Good morning. Um, today's reading is chapter, uh, James chapter 3, verses 1 through 12. Don't be in any rush to become a teacher, my friends. Teaching is highly responsible work. Teachers are held to the strictest standards, and none of us is perfectly qualified. We get it wrong nearly every time we open our mouths. If you could find someone whose speech was perfectly true, you'd have a perfect person in perfect control of life. A bit in the mouth of a horse controls the whole horse. A small rudder on a huge ship in the hands of skilled captain sets a course in the face of the strongest winds. A word out of your mouth may seem of no account, but it can accomplish nearly anything or destroy it. It only takes a spark, remember, to set off a forest fire. A careless or wrongly placed word out of your mouth can do that. By our speech, we can ruin the world, turn harmony into chaos, throw mud on a reputation, send the whole world up in smoke, and go up in smoke with it, smoke right from the pit of hell. This is scary. You can tame a tiger, but you can't tame a tongue. It's never been done. The tongue runs wild, a wanton killer. With our tongues, we bless God our Father. With the same tongues, we curse every we curse the very men and women we made in his image. He made in his image. Curses and blessings out of the same mouth. My friends, this can't go on. A spring doesn't gush fresh water from one day and brackish the next, does it? Apple trees don't bear strawberries, do they? Raspberry bushes don't bear apples, do they? You, you're not going to dip into a polluted mud hole and get a cup of clear, cool water, are you? For this particular chapter, uh, we looked at a number of different translations of the Bible, and the message really seemed to fit the best because it is very clear and pointed. Do you agree? Yeah. So remember this se section was entitled, When You Open Your Mouths. So what we just heard is that teaching was a very highly and respected profession in the Jewish culture back in the then and there. And part of the reason that was at this particular time is so many people were uh, leaning into Christ and learning about Christ. They were so excited with what they had learned, with what they were doing, that they wanted to teach and spread the word. But sometimes they jumped off and they were only half prepared to do that work. So that's where James is saying, mm -hmm, we love that you're becoming Christians, we love that you want to teach and that's an, a very excellent profession and we want you to slow down enough so that you actually get it right. So he's trying to warn them, just take a little step back, slow down, get all your facts and figures right, and then come forth and do your teaching, because that is what you're called to do. James is simply warning them about the responsibilities of teaching. Because their words and actions, they simply, certainly, and could affect the spiritual lives of others. So again, he wanted them to get it right. That was the then and there. Let's fast forward it to the here and now. I think we can all remember teachers that we have had that have had influences in our lives, whether it would have been in grade school, middle school, high school, college, vocational school, or maybe some training that we did afterwards. They positively impacted our lives. Raise your hand if you know of one of those in your life. 
Yeah, yeah, we've all got them. Now, we also remember some teachers that were not so helpful. Anybody else have one or two of those in mind as they look back? Yeah, so we can see the difference in even in our lives, the people that were super helpful and maybe the people that were not so helpful. And I hope you all remember as we're talking about this this morning that we are all teachers and we're all called up to be leaders in the spaces that we live in, whether it be in our spaces with our families, our school, maybe it's our work, our church, maybe it's at the coffee shop, maybe it's at the grocery store. You see, people are always watching those of us who call ourselves Christians. They're looking at us saying, if you talk the talk, can you also walk the walk? If you're talking about being a Christian and acting like a Christian, are you really doing it? I always tell people, you know, when people come to me or I hear interactions and their words don't mat match their, uh, or their uh, actions don't match their words, I don't believe the words, I believe the actions. Because for some reason, when they don't mesh, people look more closely at our actions. Now, people want to know, do we walk that talk? And those of us who are in or have been in the business world, you remember most often when we sign our employment agreements or we sign up to go to work, one of the things that we sign is this thing that says we are responsible for our actions and our speech, whether they're in the workplace or whether they're outside the workplace. Whether they're on Facebook, whether they're on Instagram, how we act on Snapchat, how we act out in the public, how we choose to communicate our information. It is really important. And businesses and churches alike, we wanna make sure that if indeed we profess that we're Christians, that we're actually going to say and do, we're going to walk the talk. Because you see, what we do and say, it is really, really important. And we're called up to choose our best words and our best actions as much as we can. And we talked about a couple weeks ago, we blow it. We all blow it. And when we blow it, can we stop take a step back and decide if we should step into that situation again and make an apology and say, hey, I'm sorry. So we need to choose our words and our actions very carefully. Now, I remember I found this great photo, and I can't remember if I found it on Facebook or where I found it, but it's kind of an interesting photo, don't you think? So we can't tell the gender of the person, and I think that's appropriate. It doesn't really matter if it's a man or a woman. Uh, but here's what the caption reads if you can't read it. It says, make sure it's connected before you start talking. Make sure it's connected before you start talking. And you all remember one of my favorite prayers that I shared with you a couple weeks ago? Uh, when I start to feel like a crazy situation is coming on or I'm watching a crazy situation unfold in front of me, one of my favorite prayers is, may the Lord put his arm around my shoulder and his hand over my mouth. Yeah, for sure. So suffice it to say, thank heavens we don't have to fight this battle on our own because clearly we're not strong enough. So the Holy Spirit continues to give us increasing power, increasing education, so that we can start to better control what we say and what we do. And that way, when we get offensive or when we step out of bounds or over the line, we can be reminded of God's love and the tools that God has given us to help us work through the negativity. And even when we're con continually criticized or maybe we're bullied, we're made fun of, the Spirit will also help step in and heal our own hearts. So once our hearts are healed, we can turn around and start to heal the hearts of the people that we've offended. Because don't we all know, we offend people quite regularly. So the Holy Spirit continues to mold us into being more Christ-like from the inside out. 
And it's the spirit that actually starts and works to purify our hearts so that we can have more self-control and more of what we do and say can actually be pleasing to God and pleasing to those around us. So that's the first section of James 3. The second section, remember, we said was entitled Live Well and Live Wisely. So here James is going to talk about two different kinds of wisdom. So let's hear what he has to say here. The second reading today is James chapter 3, verses 13 through 16. Do you want to be counted wise, to build a reputation for wisdom? Here's what you do. Live well, live wisely, live humbly. It's the way you live, not the way you talk, that counts. Mean-spirited ambition isn't wisdom. Boasting that you are wise isn't wisdom. Twisting the truth to make yourself sound wise isn't wisdom. It's the furthest thing from wisdom. It's animal cunning, devilish plotting. Whenever you are trying to look better than others or get the better of others, things fall apart and everyone ends up at the other's throats. Here ends today's reading. So as you heard, James is instructing the people back then and there, and also continues to instruct us to the here and now. He writes, there is earthly wisdom. And he sort of defines it like fake news. It's not good. It's when we boast, it's when we try to get the last word, it's when we try to twist the truth, it's when we try to make ourselves look better, just because it happens to fit into our narrative. James says that when we learn this type of behavior and when we practice it, things start to fall apart. Amen to that? Anyone here a good liar? Raise your hand if you think you're a good liar. Ooh, I don't have any good liars? Yeah, me neither. Not at all. I always tell people, you know what, I'm not smart enough to lie. I'm not smart enough to remember what I told this person so that when I meet the next person, I can have my story stand out. And then I start to kind of fidget a little bit. And you know, we all read that when we lie, we start to play with our face or maybe we twiddle our hair. Usually we're not good liars. Thank God we're not good liars. So if you see each other acting like that or you see me acting like that, you may want to just pull somebody aside and say, hey, what's going on? What's really going on underneath those words? James also gives us an alternative. He gives us the alternative to earthly wisdom. And he says that real wisdom comes from God. It's kind of like trying to live this holy life. And I don't want you to get turned off by the word holy. Holy for us doesn't mean perfect, but it means every day we're getting a little bit better. We're doing a little bit better with getting along with each other and just being kind. We can get better at being more gentle. Maybe it's more reasonable. Maybe it's showing mercy and being a blessing to somebody else. Or maybe it's stepping into a really tough situation and promoting justice. And I really love how James ends this chapter. So we're going to go back and revisit it. He says, you can develop a healthy, robust community that lives right with God and enjoy its results only if you do the hard work of getting along with each other treating each other with dignity and honor. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Let us pray. God, the creator of our universe and everyone and everything in the universe, continue to walk alongside each and every one of us. Please guide us so that more of what we say and do becomes a blessing to you and to those that you have placed in our spaces. Help us to live more like Christ each day, to live wisely and humbly. We ask this in the risen Christ's name. Amen. So it is at that time during the service 
when we have the ability to promote the mission work of the church, whether it's within these walls or equally as importantly outside of these walls. So it's your giving that actually makes church happen. So I'd like to thank you for your extravagant generosity and would our ushers please come forward.
Heavenly Father, we ask that you bless these tithes, these offerings, and all the man and woman hours that we spend each and every day being your light, your love, and reflecting that back to the people that you have placed in our spaces. We thank you for all that you have given us. Thank you for your blessings and give us good discernment on where best to spend your dollars back into your communities. Amen. Now, before we do our final song, I've never noticed this, but raise your hand if you know that Paul and Jean have really good voices. I just got to hear him sing. <laughs> Holy moly, you two. We got openings in the choir. <laughs> Please join us for our praising, closing praise song. Before we accept our closing blessing, please feel free to hang around after our worship service and join us for coffee refreshments and to continue talking about Jesus and being in community with each other. So please accept this closing blessing. May you be blessed. May your words and may your actions show that you are blessed. May you have a fabulous week. May you be safe. And may you share your testimony or your faith story with at least one person. Amen.